Okay, welcome everybody. Nice to have you here at the Museum of Photography. Sorry about the weather. Couldn't change that, but at least it's not raining inside here. My name is Risto Sarvas. I work at Futurewise as a service design lead. And I'm uh, going to tell you here with Anna Kaiser Rastenberger about the snapshot exhibition. But and my name is Anna Kaiser Rastenberger. I work at the Finnish Museum of Photography. And on behalf of the museum, I warmly welcome you here today. I work here as the chief curator, and, and we were part of the team who worked on this exhibition with, we're going to talk to you today. I thought about what should we say about, are we the, like the co-designers, are we, we co-leaders? Yes, or, or yes, we are team. We but are always like the part that we are like the father and the mother of the exhibit. Yeah, that's what we, and this is the fruit of our love. That's nicely put. <laughs> anyway, it's about this exhibition you guys are seeing around, you have some time to look at already, and uh, how we actually did it. And, and there's three parts in this talk. First, I'm going to show you a video that gives you a quick overview of what is this all about. What is the hashtag snapshot exhibition about? And then the main part, the middle part, we're going to go through how we actually did this. We're going to put on our thick service design eyeglasses and look at it from a service design perspective. How did we build this? And then end with kind of wrapping it up and all together that why, why we think this was an exceptional service design project. What we thought that made this really great. But let's start with that video. Että koska museot nykyaikana haluaa olla yhteiskunnallisia toimijoita, niin meidän täytyy hakea uusia yhteistyökumppaneita, uusia tapoja tehdä sisältöjä ja meidän täytyy katsoa ulos museosta ja katsoa tosi tarkkaan sitä, mitä yhteiskunnassa tapahtuu. Niin, että oli hauska huomata, että mehän tässä tehtiin se, mitä isolta firmoilta ja suomalaisessa yhteiskunnassa ehkä niin kuin laajemminkin oletetaan, että me tehdään. Eli uudenlaista yhteistyötä, business, taide, tiede, teknologia, kaikki, kaikki yhdessä. Eli... Snapshot-näyttelyssä on kyse siitä, että tuodaan tänne museoon esille se valokuvakulttuuri, mihin käytännössä kaikki nykyään osallistuu. Kaikki ottaa kuvia koko ajan itsestään, ruuastaan, kengistään. Miksi ihmiset käyttää kameroita? Mihin ne käyttää niitä kuvia? Minkälaisiin tilanteisiin ne kuvat saattaa päätyä? Ja niin, ja kyllä se näyttelytekijä palkitsee ihan, ihan mielettömästi, että opastuksen jälkeen kuudesluokkalainen poika tulee kiittämään hyvästä opastuksesta ja näyttelystä. Se, mikä mun mielestä tässä on hienoa, on, että Futurise on ottanut askeleen taaksepäin pohtii sitä, mitä tietotekniikka oikeastaan tekekään yhteiskunnassa, miten se vaikuttaa meidän keskinäisiin suhteisiin. Ja koska tämä näyttely kertoo siitä, mitä on valokuvaus aikana, jolloin internet mullisti valokuvauksen, näyttelyssä pitää olla teknologia. Tämä ei voi olla tavallinen valokuvanäyttely kuvat seinällä. Futurisen alla tässä näyttelyssä on tullut interaktiivisempi kuin normaalisti. Että ihmiset ovat voineet osallistua tähän helpommin ja nopeammin jo näyttelyn aikana netissä kotona tai sitten paikan päällä. Nykyään vaan on pakko tarjota kävijälle jotain semmoista uutta ja jotain silmiä avaavaa ja jotain semmoista, mitä se ei ole osannut edes odottaa, kun se astuu museoon. Se, mikä muuttuu hashtag Snapshotin jälkeen ja mitä me käytetään seuraavissa näyttelyissä, on tämä yleisöpolun ajattelu. Ja tämän futuri se toi, toi näihin meihin palavereihin, että miten yleisö kohtaa näyttelyn jo näyttelytilan ulkopuolella, miten, mitkä on ne askeleet, millä me saadaan yleisö tänne sisään ja miten me on saatu ne tänne sisään. Yleensä me tehdään käviä tutkimusta vasta kun näyttely on avautunut. Me seurataan, miten ihmiset reagoivat ja ketkä käyvät näyttelyssä. Mutta tällä kertaa me tehtiinkin tämä käviä tutkimus ja haastattelut aivan ensimmäisenä. Me työskenneltiin niiden kuvitteellisten kävijöiden kanssa ja heidän identiteettiensä kanssa sillä tavalla, että me lähdettiin tutkailemaan sitä käviä polkua eli sitä kokemusta, mistä se näyttelykokemus sitten myöhemmin rakentuu. Suunnittelu- ja toteutusprosessiin tuotiin tällainen klassinen boundary object eli tietyn tyylinen rajapinta, tässä tapauksessa palvelusuunnittelun menetelmät, jotka mahdollisti sen, että ihmiset eri taustoista tuli yhteen, teki yhdessä töitä ja hitsautui yhteiseksi joukoksi, jolloin saatiin tämä näyttely aikaan. Tämä näyttely on fiksu, tämä on yhteiskunnallinen, tämä on hauska, tämä on arkipäiväinen ja tämä on samaan aikaan todella ylevä. When we started working on, on the contemporary snapshot photography culture, we, we knew that it's not going to be like traditional exhibition. We, we, we are not going to have 
photographs on the wall, as usually at the photography exhibitions. And uh, you know, it's, it's been a huge change during, let's say, last 10 years in, in contemporary photographic culture because of internet. Um, people are shooting more than ever. We have more images than ever. We have more photographs than ever. People are sharing images more than ever. And that's, that's something which has really changed the contemporary photographic culture. Um, it's as important as shooting images today is to share them. And we have uh, numbers and numbers of photo sharing sites in internet. And even more important, we have every one of us, every one of us we are having a mobile phone in our um, pocket. We are, having, we are carrying camera with us, which enables us to uh, share online all the time our images. So when we, we started working on this, this topic, um, we really realized that this is absolutely fascinating uh, topic, but it's not easy to make that into an exhibition. And that's we, that was the point when we turned to Futurize and Risto. So, first of all, I think you might be wondering why should, uh, what is a service design, service development company? Why should we do a photography ex exhibition? Well, one of the key reasons is that in our company there's a lot of people and our company in itself wants to do something public good, wants to have a social impact. And once the museum contacted us that do we want to be a partner in building this exhibition, we saw that it was a great opportunity for us to do something directly for the public good, to do directly something to tell our point of view of technology to the people at large. But on the other hand, we also saw this, that this is a really, really interesting design challenge. Typically in a service design project, there's, you know, there's a relatively clear scope of we need to do a new service for this big organization and so forth. But now there's this whole cultural transformation that needs to be turned into an exhibition, put into something people can actually walk into. And that, that was a really great challenge that, you know, we just couldn't pass by. Um, and again, kind of a few points wh or where we saw that also that this is, this is very different from our typical project. First of all, I mean, there's no clear technical platform. It's not like, you know, we're going to do an iPhone app and service for it. The only technical platform that was fixed is this big space over here. Second of all, there was no client organization as such. Of course, there's the museum, but no, they weren't our client. They were more our partner. We're doing together with them. And what meant also that the big organization didn't, you know, the museum doesn't have business drivers as such, like a big commercial organization. And in a service design project, of course, you can take those business drivers in the beginning and try to understand how you turn this into the business that the organization is taking forward. Well, none of that really existed as such. And, of course, there were no existing solutions we could take. We couldn't go and see that, okay, let's see how they have done this in Sweden with this insurance company and let's bring it to Finland. <coughs> because nobody had really done these kind of exhibitions as such. Uh, and also, there was no ready brand. There was no brand image. There was no, you know, for the visual, for the look and feel and all that stuff, we had the great opportunity to build it from scratch, more or less. And that's the whole point why we saw this as a really great service design challenge. Really take the methods, our own skills, but also the typical service design methods. Let's put them into this very strange project and see how do they bend and twist with when some of these things just don't exist that very typically do exist in a project. So how did we start doing this? Here's a rough overview of the process. Uh, it's kind of a very typical phase is here. I'm going to, in the following slides, going to go through a few of them uh, in more detail. We started actually a, a year ago doing this with uh, interviews and turned them into the ideation and actual concept part where we thought that what should this exhibition be about. And there I'm going to tell more about the design drivers, the design strategy that emerged from the ideation process. And then in spring, Last spring, really, once we had a good idea what this exhibition is going to be all about, there was a certain division of labor. And during springtime, I think there was already 30 people working on this, this project. And then gradually, summer came, you know, all of us, I'm going to talk about prototyping here from our futurized perspective. And then gradually, after the summer vacations, we started actually building it. And by building it, I really mean building it. You know, we had carpenters and painters here. And 
you can see we actually build it into this space. And the launch, of course, was the opening, the 20th of August. One of the things that we realized in the beginning, as service designers coming into this project, is that this is, of course, a really big thing. This is like a cultural transformation that really touches all of us. You know, everybody in our society has certain relationship to photography, and it has probably changed. So it's a huge thing. So we couldn't start with the typical design research. Like, let's take two weeks into design research and interview 10 people about it, and then we understand the whole photography scene. Well, that was not really possible for us. And second of all, Futurize, we didn't really have any experience building a cultural exhibition. We haven't done public exhibitions before. So from service design perspective, it became quite obvious that we need to fix this somehow. And of course, we were very lucky that we had really good contacts to academia, to university researchers who had studied photography, especially snapshot photography for years, I mean, 10 years. So we had to bring them in. And then, of course, our partner here, the Museum of Photography, they are experts in building exhibitions. They understand who are the visitors, how do you bring visitors in, and, how do you, and what do the visitors really are looking for. So what we had to do was to open up the service design and bring these people into really into the core, into the very <laughs> beginning, because we couldn't just rely on their expertise by interviewing them, but we had to kind of turn them into designers, equal designers, just like us in the process. And that's why at the first point is here that we had to build this, what I call a tight, a very tight alliance between us. And of course, the great thing was that all three kind of parties here, we had this certain desire to make public good. We wanted to make a social impact, to open up this very technology-based transformation to people, so people un would understand what is actually going on in their photography. And the first step we did was this. Yeah, and from museum perspective, the most important thing is the audience. Who are the visitors? We are not building exhibitions for ourselves. We are not building them for other experts. We are building them for audience. And of course, who are the visitors? Who is the audience? And in that case, when we were talking about something, uh, a topic which, is, which has something to do with every one of us, we thought that it's, it's, um, it's really large audience we are targeting now. We started with interviews. As you saw at the, um, this short video clip, usually we do the interviews when we are having the exhibition on. But this time we started doing an interview. We picked up nine different um, people different from different, who had a different relationship to, to photography and we interviewed them. And uh, according to those interviews, we built up identities, different people with different identities. Uh, in relation to photography. And uh, then after making these profiles, we, we started targeting the visitors. Who are the target audience? Which, what, uh, what we could offer for certain people with a certain interest, interest with photography. And that the whole process was very important for us when we were working at that time, we were working like 10 or 15 people with this exhibition. It was kind of a, it really glued us together. It was really, we were really excited meeting these visitors. We were excited listening people's opinion about photography. And we really, they really opened our eyes. We, we thought that we knew what is contemporary photography, what people are doing with photos in internet before this, um, before this um, interviews, but we did not. After the interviews, we were, we were stuck together and we were much wiser. Yes, I personally I remember I had the opportunity to interview two 13-year-old girls. And I just remember them telling me everything they do every day and I'm just writing notes and being just amazed in the, the roller coaster ride of listening. They had at that time they had something like nine different social media photography apps they used every day on their phone. Have you noticed how many times we've been tagged in the Instagram feeds? Hashtag snapshot, hashtag snapshot. Yeah, yeah. They've been visiting here many times. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So after the interview process, as Anna Kaiser here said, we had a common ground. We could really, you know, some of us had thought about this ex exhibition for five years. Some of us had just come in. So we had to all bring the ideas together. And now we had some kind of idea of who would the audience be. Um, 
So that was a good starting point for the ideation. So one morning here you can actually see the results of our ideation. We had a typical brainstorming about ideas and we had something like over 100 ideas there and then we started gradually turning them into concepts and thinking about the value proposition related to them and so forth. But what started really emerging from the ideation process, looking at all these post-its and, and all the discussions we had around this, that two things started emerging, two kind of design drivers, which you know, I call as that became kind of our design strategy for this. Well, first of all, we wanted to really embrace the richness. That we realized that there's so many things in this cultural transformation. There's like you know, hashtags, there's the whole social media, there's a lot of different kind of apps and services going on. There's the whole historical part of this. There's like photo books. There's many, many things that have been happened and we don't really want to select one of them and make an exhibition based on them, but we want to bring everything into this exhibition. Which of course means that we made several different installations that are, you know, taking a different angle to this whole thing. But of course the problem with that would be that the exhibition would look something like that wall over there. So on the other hand, we had to have some way of tying this whole thing together. How do we make this a coherent experience? And this is kind of the, the approach that we started to tackling in the design. And this is really the, the point I'm focusing on in this talk. So we wanted some kind of a coherent richness, if you will. So what we started doing was once we had a, some kind of an idea what kind of installations we're going to have. So this is actually a photograph of uh, a Lego blueprint of this museum space we are in now. And here you can see the different you know, installations put there. And then first drawing this on paper, then a little bit working on the Lego, and then actually building a prototype of this. Started looking at how, what kind of a journey, a customer journey, if you will, we wanted to build throughout this, throughout this exhibition. So, on the other hand, we wanted, the, the challenge became that how to get our message through. We still wanted to, that the person who leaves this exhibition has a certain kind of idea has a certain kind of inspiration, has thought about their own personal photography. How do you get that through when you have this pile of installations? And how do we make it actually personal? Because this photo exhibition is about everybody. So when a visitor comes in, they should realize that this is about you. This is not an artist presenting their work. This is actually about your photography and how it has changed in the past years. So we decided to do a couple of things. We first of all, we start, decided to have that let's start the exhibition with something where we have a really tight grip on, on giving a very kind of clear message to the visitor that this is what it's all about. And then kind of the middle part being more or less like a buffet, if you will, that they could go from installation to installation in their own, own time, what inspires, does go and look at that, spend more time there, skip over that one and so forth. And then coming back at the end, we again wanted to kind of take take a more tight grip on the customer, on the visitor path. So how did we actually begin this? You saw this when you came here. So we started with this one installation that we call the social media gate, um, which is a big box or a big monolith you saw there when you came in. And you can't really go past it, you have to see it. And in this big box, you have many things that are in the core of the, in the whole exhibition. It is a camera where it has a big red button that you need to push. And that when you take a picture, it sends it to Twitter. So first of all, it has the whole internet thing. The internet thing that has really changed photography. That's obvious in that installation. It has references to history as well. The, the slogan over there is actually the Kodak's ori original marketing slogan. And, and the, the brand image actually has a lot of nods to Kodak and the old photography culture. The box is interactive. There's a button you have to push. There's a camera, there's a screen. It's all about the selfie, taking a self image. And then finally, it's all about you as the visitor doing something in the exhibition. So once the person got in, the first thing kind of gives all of this in one installation and makes it quite clear that this is not an ordinary exhibition. But this is something where you have to think, do you want to be an active visitor that pushes all the buttons and does all the cool stuff? Or do you want to remain passive and just, you know, see what's over here and think about it? And then after this first 
confrontation, if you will. There was kind of the, you know, just summing up the rest of the exhibition, which of course was very, very rich. So what happen, happens after when you have pushed the button, when you enter the exhibition? There are more than 17 different installations in, in that exhibition. The one you see here, that pile of 900,000 photos gives you an idea what's, what's, what is in, in material the number of images which is loaded to Flickr in 24 hours. You, can, you might find your own images there. You go there, it's, they are printed out from Flickr in, in uh, uh, 2011, so we encourage people to go there and touch the images, find their own. There are images also from Finland, there are images from all parts of the uh, world. So, uh, in, in that exhibition we wanted to really tackle different perspective of contemporary photographic culture and uh, we wanted to show the history, what's the origin of uh, snapshot culture. We are, we are showing historical images, we are showing uh, images which are coming online from uh, Instagram feeds in that Helsinki, Helsinki Instagram feed. Uh, we are encouraging visitors to lay down and just enjoy images. At the moment we are having amazing, talented Instagram feeds in our phones, but it's sometimes really irritating to watch them in your very small screen. So you just lay down and enjoy online Instagram, which are coming from the, one of the best Instagram feeds. Um, we also wanted to sharpen the um, perspective with art. This installation here, it's made by Eric Kessel, um, Dutch artist. These photographs there, they are not snapshot. These are staged images, staged photographs by uh, Catherine Ballet, French photographer. And she's telling about the culture. What's, what's this kind of a social phenomenon when people are carrying their mobile phone? How how it has changed the social situation with our families and our friends. And also they have strong references to history. These are uh, made according to paintings, historical paintings. Uh, also, we, which has been said many times, we wanted to be playful, we wanted to uh, make people active, but we also wanted to make people think. There is one part which is really much focused on political impact of contemporary uh, snapshot culture. Uh, at the moment we are living in the world where uh, one amateur image, one image by everyone, every woman or every man um, has potential to have more audience than ever before. You just shoot one image, you load it to internet and you can get millions of audience. And uh, that's a tool which is uh, very strong and which hasn't been uh, possible before. So we wanted to have all these kind of different perspectives in that exhibition. But while audience is turning around, you don't have to go and see all these installations. You just pick up what you want to do and you, you read what you want to read, you watch what, what you want to do, and then you end up where? The final part. So after that journey and you know, having and enjoying and, and thinking about these different installations, when it came to the end of the path, we wanted to, again, as I said, take a tight grip. So just before, in the living room area there, where people, there was a guest book where people could send the images they had taken here to themselves via email. The next thing was this dark room, or is right there, um, that is really asking that, are you in control of your own images? Please come in and have a look. And what we built in that dark room is kind of a surprise to the visitors. So on the other hand, uh, we had tracked everything. We track everything people do here with just typical you know, computer and software technology. All the images that they take over here and all the interaction with the guest book is, goes into a one single system. And what we built in this room is a very, it's just an ordinary analytics dashboard. It's just showing, putting all that data together, showing kind of in, with the tools of analytics what is the typical museum visitor doing here. But then kind of a sugar coating to that to make it a really even uncomfortable surprise. The last screen over there takes the person's name from the guest book and does a Google image search based on them and shows that, okay, these are other images that we found about you. 
And it does very simple calculations, say that this is when you arrived to the exhibition, this is where you were there, and then you know, after 10 minutes you were there, and then after 50 minutes you were there. And the point being that, of course, what we wanted to do is to show the other side of the images, the whole privacy invasion part. But we didn't want to just preach about it. We wanted people to really experience it and then make them think that, okay, are we okay with this? Is this, you know, all this fun, all these imaging images, the thing is that our concept of privacy is changing. And it's so much stronger to make people feel it than just think about it. But nevertheless, we didn't want to end with this uncomfortable privacy invention. So that We wanted to celebrate images, not make people scared. Exactly. We didn't want that. Um, so in the end, we literally built this room for thought. So the final part of the exhibition, we did, wanted people, before they leave the space, is to actually think about their photography. No technology. No tech, very simple technology. <laughs> Just piece of paper and pen. And think, but why do you photograph? After looking at all these installations and having the experience, think for a second, why do you photograph and have you, have, how has it changed? And of course it fits perfectly because this exhibition is about the visitors themselves. So let's have them also be part of the exhibition. And you can, when you leave, you can look, there's probably like a couple of thousand There are ideas. so many, they are falling down. We need to even take them out because there are so many comments now. So it's really like a huge resource for us. Mm -hmm. Maybe we're going to do a next exhibition about that. Just about that. Mm. So it's about you. Then a few words about prototyping before wrapping it up. Because I think with prototyping, again, from service design perspective, we try to push prototyping kind of to its own uncomfortable zone. And one of the things we did with prototyping was the feeling. So building that analytics dark room, we wanted to kind of get some ideas. How do people react when you know, their private images pop up in places that they didn't expect? So we did this just very simple trial. We are friends with most of the museum staff here in Facebook. So we took their private images. We used some common sense to figure out who are their friends and relatives, took some of their images, and then Surprise. just posted them on the wall over here. And then one by one we asked them, could you want to come here? And then just show, look at these images. And then talking about how did you feel? What are your thoughts about this? So getting kind I of an you're idea. Married. How many children do you have? Exactly. <laughs> who is this man? <laughs> yeah. So getting an idea, how do people actually react into this? And it was really interesting and important in building, how do we build that kind of the feeling into that dark room over there. But we also took prototyping, pushed into the, the, the visitor journey, the visitor path I've been talking about. So one of the prototypes we did, we, in one office room in our Futurize offices, we built what we call a mini exhibition. So we built the very prototypes of the, all the interactive parts because they have to work together in the cloud to, to create the analytical room. So we built these little installations there. We had some prototypes of the actual other installations. We could go to the internet and print these Catherine Ballet images. So kind of simulate a person going through this and enjoying all this stuff. And then in the end, having their privacy invaded. And then again, thinking, how does it work technically? How do we put, integrate all this together? But also very important in communicating to the museum and our other partners that with what are we actually building and how it will fit together with everything we're doing here. So um, at this stage, you know, before summer, there was, as I said, like 30 people working on this. Then in July were summer vacations. And I say it all came together like magic because it's credit to all of us, especially to the museum people, that everything really fitted together. There was no bureaucracy here. I don't think we had any documentation or, or any reporting in the project. And you have to remember, just in, August, <laughs> in August, there was like 50 people working on this. Uh, a lot of volunteers helping with that pile actually over there. But I think the importance was the common ground we built in the beginning, but also the kind of the mental thing that everybody really wanted to do this. Everybody wanted to do this, a desire to do an exhibition that anybody can walk into. So what was it all about? What is hashtag snapshot Ankh? <sighs> it's an amazing exhibition. It's amazing photography exhibition. It's, it's, as I said, it's clever, it's funny, it's sublime. It's, uh, um, what was very important to me as working with photography and working at the museum was that we started with a very 
fascinating and complicated topic. And we knew that we need to do simplification. We knew that we need to really wrap things in a simple packages. But I think that we did not compromise in content. And uh, that's really all important to me as uh, working on humanistic fields and humanistic art history, that we, we ended up to exhibition, which is uh, um, content wise, I'm very proud of as well as, as a, in, a, in a practic. Mm. Yeah, it's, I start crying almost because it's, it's so important thing mm. that you are compromising all the time when you are doing exhibition. But when we started working, we knew that it is very special and it's a very complicated topic because it has something to do with all of you, with all of us. But I think that we managed greatly. Mm. Definitely. And then the question, of course, is that was it, has it been a success? And <laughs> I think it has been a great, been a great success. At least look at it some kind of a meters. At this stage, we have something over 13,000 people visiting us. And one of the people visiting us are high school groups. And just thinking about the impact that almost every high school in the Helsinki area, one class, has visited this. And if we have made these kids think about their photography, I'm really proud about what we made. We had a really great media coverage. I think all local newspapers had it, but also the big ones here in Finland. Helsingin Sanomat had like three stories uh, in, just in the culture section. Practically all the radio, all the, the television media has covered this. And the exhibition really spread from the museum to, we had two blogs, we had two Twitter feeds, we had a series of discussion, we had a series of lecture, we had workshops, we had enormously all kind of uh, things did that uh, attached to this exhibition. Mm -hmm. Definitely. But then wrapping it up, so we're running out of time here. I think there's like probably hundred lessons learned <laughs> about this project, uh, and I would really like to tell about them. But we have three things we have put here. The first one is is kind of a general big lesson. I think you know we as service designers could take from this which is that really rethinking what's the purpose of these methods that we, Futurize, brought into this project. That typically we often think that methods are for problem solving. You know? There is a nail, we need a hammer. There is a screw, we need a screwdriver. But what really we realized here that an important part of the methods was actually bringing the people together. As Asko said in the video, it became really the interface of gluing, gluing the people together. And that's really, really, that makes you really think about the methods, what's the purpose of them? And of course, what it means in our case, it meant that we had to open these methods to people who were not that familiar with them, really to explain what's the point of this method and really kind of reflect on the methodology itself. But then the two other things, I, we decided to have two kind of personal things we learned about this. So Anka. I learned that um, you can be intellectual and smart at the same time, playful and have a good sense of humor. That's a good lesson. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a good lesson. We were intellectual and fun. And smart, yeah. <laughs> For me, it really was, I, I thought about this. What's the one thing I want to bring about this? And this is definitely the biggest kind of social impact public good project I've been involved with. And when I realized it, that us as designers, I think a lot of us want to, you know, say something about our society, about the information technology in the public sector. And we can write about it, we can talk about it, but at the end of the day, the most efficient way of us taking part in the public discussions is building stuff. And that's what we were, you know, so lucky to have the opportunity that we can take our skills and design and build stuff and then kind of show our point of view show that, you know, make people think about things that we think are really, really important. That is, thank you. And uh, I encourage you, you can visit the exhibition now. It's still one month here in, in Finland, then it starts its European tour. Next summer you have to go to Hamburg, to the Photo Triennale to see this exhibition. And, and then if we're lucky, then maybe someday it will come back to Helsinki. Yeah, it will be localized there. So obviously the images in Hamburg will be images from Hamburg, from Germany. We no. don't carry Finnish images there. No, we don't. Yeah. But I'm hoping they that someday it will some come back. In Hamburg, I and guess. then we can yeah. update this to Helsinki yeah. maybe in year 2020. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.